Um, my name is Aaron Lovelock. I'm an electrical engineer with Cleary Zimmerman Engineers. And today I'm going to be answering your electrical engineering questions as part of our series called MEP 101. All right, let's get started with the first question. What is the main responsibility of an electrical engineer in the MEP design process? The main responsibility of an electrical engineer in the MEP design process is in the planning and the design of the electrical systems in buildings. So that can include things like the lighting systems, power distribution, special systems, which is nurse call, fire alarm systems. It's our responsibility to really design and plan those systems in accordance with, with codes and requirements. All right, let's look at another question. What is the first thing you look at during a site visit? Generally, the first thing I look at at a site visit is where power enters into my building. So what the utility power supply looks like, whether that's overhead, underground, a pad mounted transformer. After that, I really like to look at what the first piece of equipment in the electrical distribution system is, whether that's a switchboard, distribution board, disconnect. I like to see where that's located and what that is. Okay, let's look at the next question. How do you determine the appropriate electrical system for a building? Now, this is a good question. Some electrical systems are code-driven, meaning that code requires a certain electrical system. These can include emergency systems or legally required standby systems. Otherwise, it's really a function of what the building type is, how big it is, what the client wants, what pieces of equipment are being served. All that goes into the decision of what electrical system the building's gonna have. Okay, let's look at another question. What is your favorite type of project? My favorite type of project really is projects that make me think or come up with um, a fun solution, I would say. So that might be things like hospitals where I have to account for different emergency power systems um, or large office buildings where I get to creatively and efficiently lay out the electrical distribution system. Okay, next question is, how do you calculate a project's electrical load? Now, this is a good question. There's a code called NFPA 70, also known as the National Electric Code which deals with how to appropriately size branch feeder and service loads. They have a whole article, Article 215, which deals with this. It basically guides you through what type of loads and how much that kind of goes up to the utility and then helps you size the service load for the building. And here's another question. How do you stay up to date with the latest electrical codes and standard? Lots of reading, lots and lots of reading. Okay, here's the next question. What skills are crucial for being a successful electrical engineer? I think the skills that are crucial for becoming and for being a successful engineer um, are probably things like a willingness to learn, um, an interest in electrical systems, and a willingness to continue to develop yourself. Okay, here's another question. How do you determine what lighting works for a space? Now, what lighting works for a space is a very interesting question, and there's a lot of factors that can go into this. Um, it depends on the type of space, so what's going to be performed in that space. It depends what the owner likes, if the owner has any preferences, if there's any owner-driven requirements. Um, in addition to that, there's recommendations that are given out by um, a group called the IES, the Illumination Engineering Society. And they have recommendations for many different types of spaces, many different types of buildings, um, that will provide lighting levels that, that are generally suited for that type of space. Okay, here's another question. What role does energy efficiency and sustainability play in your electrical design approach? It plays a large role. So a lot of jurisdictions, a lot of cities, a lot of states require um, compliance with something called the IECC, the International Energy Conservation Code. And this code sets requirements for energy efficiency within buildings. And so some of those things that affect electrical engineering are lighting efficiency, transformer efficiency, energy metering, automatic receptacle control. And so by complying with that code, we, we, we meet a standard of energy efficiency in buildings. Okay, here's the next question. How do you ensure that your electrical designs are safe? Now, going back to NFPA 70, the National Electric Code, the, the purpose of that code is really to provide a set of requirements that safeguard um, the safety of persons and properties against electrical hazards in buildings. And so by complying with that code and having an understanding of that code and how to implement it in de designing an electrical system, we can ensure that most of the electrical hazards are protected against. 
Okay, here's another question. What are some emerging technologies or trends in electrical engineering? I think some of the things that I've seen lately emerging in electrical engineering, especially MEP electrical engineering, is things like electric vehicle chargers. More and more clients are requesting electric vehicle chargers in their car parks um, and in their buildings. Um, additionally, I'm seeing a lot more focus on energy metering within buildings, being able to granularly um, meter different load types within buildings as well. Well, it looks like that's all the questions we have today. Thanks so much for watching.